I'm so happy I'm here to be able to uh, get to talk about a viral maths problem. I mean, when does that happen? Come on. And this is not in the maths community. We're talking about like in the big wide world. This is really exciting. Have you heard of it, Brady? It's got a few names at the moment. Um, it's like the Singapore maths problem. Like it's a, it's a, a com the competition maths problem originating from Singapore. It's also the Cheryl problem. I'm not saying anything against Cheryl. Cheryl's not a problem. Cheryl's usually pretty nice. So if you've been living under a rock, I'll quickly explain uh, what it is. It's actually, from a mathematical point of view, it's a classic logic problem. It involves three people. Cheryl, Albert, and Bernard. Okay, so Cheryl is trying to get Albert and Bernard to guess her birthday. For what reason, we don't know. Um, you know, maybe she's just trying to play Albert against Bernard. Or maybe Albert and Bernard, you know, are trying to scam Cheryl for like a secret question for a bank account, who knows? But anyway, she gives them a bunch of options. Okay, so Cheryl has shared a, a possible pool of dates, but now what she's done is she's actually gonna give a piece of information to Albert and a piece of information to Bernard. An incomplete piece of information about her birthday. So this is, what, this is how it goes. It goes, Albert, I'm gonna tell you the month. Whisper, 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 okay? And Bernard, I'm gonna tell you the date. Whisper, 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 okay? So now they have, they, the, all they know is, is that Bernard knows that Albert knows the month, and Albert knows that Bernard knows the date, but they don't know it together, okay? And so then they have a little exchange. So Albert states, I don't know when Cheryl's birthday is, comma, but I know that Bernard does not know too. Then Bernard replies, at first, I didn't know when Cheryl's birthday is, but I know now. So now suddenly Bernard knows. But what happens? Is Albert left in the dark? No. Somehow, Albert is then able to deduce, then I also know when Cheryl's birthday is. So now they both know. And presumably Cheryl, Cheryl is either happy or, <laughs> or upset. Or, or her bank account's been broken. Or her bank account has been broken into, something like that. We don't know exactly. Um, the question is, how can you find out the information? Nothing is, is explicit, is it, Brady? I mean, it just seems like they're playing games. I mean, are they Jedis? What's going on? Are they reading each other's minds? And this is the nature of these logic problems. Believe it or not, this isn't the first time I've been faced with a problem like this. Us mathematicians, we get asked these problems all the time. And so the way to answer this is to actually break it down and try and attack it logically, because otherwise you're not going to get anywhere. I am now going to rearrange this information here, because this is really important. We need to have something to focus on. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to split out the dates. So at the top here, I'm going to, I'm going to put 14, uh, 15, but the dates there in columns and in rows, I'm going to place the months. So here is May. So now what I'm going to do there is I'm just going to have a look at this. So May 15. Okay. Oh, cross is just basically, this is an option. This could be it. 16 or 19. Yeah, these are, these are all contenders. What I'm going to do is actually give us a bit of understanding here because once we get into the logic, we could get lost. Let's look at the options for this column. For the, uh, the day or the date 14, how many different options do we have? We've got two, okay? 15, we have two. 16, we have two. 17, we have two. 18, we have one. And 19, we have one as well. Okay, now let's have a look for uh, months. So now for months, how many options do we have for each month? So we have one, two, three for May two for June, two for July, and three for August. See where I'm going with this, Brady? So now what's going on here is that I've actually just, I've just spread out the information before I start bringing in the weird conversation that they had, the weird terse conversation that they had. So now Albert says, I don't know, I don't know what the birthday is. Okay. Of course he doesn't. Yeah, but that's a weird thing to say. Can I just say that? It is a weird thing to say. Because in a logic problem, obviously you don't. We both know the game here. You've only been told months. There is three options, two options, two options, three options. The only way you'd know is if there was one month there with only one date. Okay, just saying that, I'm just saying that. What's interesting though is Albert says, but I also know that Bernard doesn't know. Hang on a minute, how did he know that? We've got the information in a way that, you know, I'm gonna be able to work with. 
But just looking at this, straight away there are some red hot dates. Here, June 18, well if you have a look at it, it's only one 18 that applies to any of the months. It happens to be June. In actual fact, the same for May, there's 19. 19 is not anywhere else. Can you see that, Brady? There's nothing around there. What this means is, if Cheryl leant over and said to Bernard, 18, or 19, what that means is, straight away, Bernard would be in. It's like a gimme. It's like, bang, I know exactly what it is. You give me the information, it can only be one thing. But see, Albert, in a, in a sort of like a gloating way, I mean, really, Albert needs a little bit of emotional intelligence, I think, because he's basically gloating and he's going, oh, I've got information that excludes the gimmies. So I know, Bernard, that you don't have gimmies. But how can he not know? Because he doesn't have the date information, he's only got month information. Okay, what are the months that had potential for gimmies? Well, they were June and they were May. And that's the only information that Albert has. He only has month information, yeah? Monthly information. So, what can we deduce from this? Let's get mathematicians here, okay? We're all getting mathematical. Albert says, I don't know the date. Yes, okay, that's a weird thing to say. But I also know that Bernard doesn't know the date. So logically, what you've got to say is, therefore, Cheryl didn't whisper May or June in his ear. So, obviously, Cheryl whispered something like July or August. That's what she did. Because if she said May or June, Albert wouldn't be saying that with conviction. Well, that means that this is no longer an option. And this is no longer an option. But because Albert has said, I know that 18 and 19 are not an option, the only way Albert would have known that is through monthly information. So in actual fact, this is gone, this is gone, and this is gone. Basically everything in May and everything in June is gone. This is great because with my prize little chart here, I can actually reduce some numbers here. So now this goes down to zero. This goes down to zero. So now Bernard actually knows, oh, in actual fact, because all of May and all of June, all the dates that we had on the table are all gone, that affects the total number of options I have for each day. Doesn't matter about his date, he's actually just looking at all the dates. So now for 14, well, there's still two there, that hasn't changed. But for 15, we've just struck out May. So now this is only one option. For the 16th, that was in May and July. May struck out, so now there's only one standing in this column. For 17, same thing, look at this. There's June 17, and then there's uh, August 17. So this one gets struck out. And then for 18 and 19, they turn down to zero too. So Albert's given this information. Now Bernard has been able to reduce the options. But to be clear, for Bernard to know the birthday, he already has the date, he just needs the month. So now Bernard says, at first I don't know when Cheryl's birthday is, but I know now. So from what Albert has said, Bernard is now able to say what the month is. Okay, so now let's put ourselves in Bernard's shoes. So now he's actually discounted May and June. Um, he's reduced the number of options. Really, you're only talking about July and August. Now, if he did have 14, right, there are still two options on the table. So, he didn't have 14. If he did have 14, he would have said something like, uh, yeah, I still don't know, okay? But instead he goes, I didn't know before, which means he didn't have the gimmies, but now he knows. How does he know? Because there are actually new gimmies on the table, Brady, you wouldn't believe it. Look at this, the new gimmies are 15, 16, and 17. So now, if he's holding on to 15, 16, or 17 in his, in his head, or really in his heart, because we're dealing with Cheryl here, what's happening here is he's going, wow, there's only one 15 that applies to August, there's only one 16 that applies to July, and there's only one 17 that applies to August again. Look, if I have any of these dates, I will know exactly which month it applies to. So, at this stage of the problem, it could have been 15, 16, or 17. So now, Bernard is going shoo, 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 boop, 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 and this one goes down to zero. But not only that, because July and August have now lost a date. 
So that means over here, we need to go bang, 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 one. And over here, we need to go bang, 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 two. Right. So what's the last statement? Albert says, then I also know when Cheryl's birthday is. Okay, so that means he's got a gimme. So now if we have a look where the gimme's are, let's look at the options. He's either got July or August. What options do we have here? Well, August is no good because it's got two options. That means it's ambiguous. It means he doesn't have gimme's. It could be either 15 or 17. But because he knows it has to be July. Do you know what that means, Brady? It means that Albert is going, uh-uh, sorry. And uh, Albert's going, uh-uh, sorry. So this now goes down to zero. This goes down here. Well, Albert's doing it, so I'm doing it in blue. That one goes down to zero too. So now look what we end up with. We end up with one option for the month and one option for the date that they can both get. And that option is July 16. Okay, what's really interesting about this problem is, is the fact that because it's using words, it's actually open to interpretation. If this was actually redone in just pure symbolic logic, it would be unambiguous. But because we're using these sentences, in actual fact, people have opened them up into interpretation. 